Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free vanilla wafer cookies. Sometimes these are known as just vanilla wafers. Recently I made a banana cream pie and I had a couple of people comment that they used to make a banana cream dessert with vanilla wafer cookies. So I thought these would be the perfect cookie to show you. And they're not just great for a banana cream pie filling or something like that. They're a delicious cookie just to eat. They're also delicious as a pie crust of any kind for a banana cream pie or a different kind of cream pie. So the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat my oven. So I'm preheating my oven to 325. These cookies need to bake at a lower temperature for a little bit longer. And today I'm making a double batch. Anytime I'm gonna make any kind of cookie like this or a graham cracker or something like that, I always double the recipe. Just because I'm gonna be doing it anyways, I might as well make a lot. They freeze really well for later uses, like a pie crust. So I've got three cups of my gluten-free flour. In the description box, I will put the recipe for a single batch of these cookies. And then I've got an extra cup of cornstarch. I find that this extra added starch in here, it really makes a difference in making our cookies more crispy than cake-like. And then I've got one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. We'll just mix this together. Now you could use a stand mixer or a hand mixer, but I'm just using a whisk today. But use whatever you've got. And then I've got a couple of cookie sheets lined with parchment paper. So there is our dry ingredients mixed together. I've got one cup of butter and it's really soft room temperature. You wanna just mix it around, cream it around with your whisk. And if it's the right room temperature consistency, it will be really easy to mix around, although it does get stuck in the whisk a little bit. And that's okay. So once your butter looks like that, I've got two thirds cup of honey. My oven is preheated. When I was researching different recipes to make my homemade gluten-free version, and of course, my not traditional sugar version, I found a couple of different recipes that use white sugar, and then I found a couple of different recipes that use powdered sugar. I don't use either of those sugars, and so I've not ever made this recipe using either of those sugars. But I do notice that the added cornstarch mixed with my gluten-free flour gives me the texture that I'm looking for. So just cream together your butter and your honey. So I encourage you to experiment with regular white sugar and powdered sugar and see what result you like the best. And if you're gonna use powdered sugar in your recipe, I don't know that you'll need as much cornstarch because some powdered sugar has added cornstarch to it. Once you've got that all creamed together, I've got two tablespoons of vanilla. You really want a nice quality vanilla because that is the main flavor for these cookies. And I actually thought about using vanilla bean paste, which would add really nice flavor but I'm just going with vanilla extract. Vanilla bean paste is kind of expensive, and this is a lot. So I've got four eggs here, room temperature, as everything else is room temperature. And we'll just go one at a time with our eggs. There's my first egg. I'm gonna get my second egg ready while I'm at it. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that can't have eggs or don't like to use eggs. I use a lot of eggs 
in my baking. And I also use the egg in place of xanthan gum. So I encourage you with your gluten-free baking, if you don't use eggs, experiment with different gums like xanthan gum or guar gum, arrowroot powder, and really experiment to get the desired result that you're looking for with ingredients that you can have. There goes our second egg. I'm gonna get my next egg ready. Egg number three. After the first egg, things look really chunky. After the second egg, a little less chunky. By egg number three, it really is starting to come together. Egg number four, and my two tablespoons of vanilla. Now for the dry ingredients, I'm going to add about half in now and mix with my whisk and I'll switch to my spatula for the other half of my dry ingredients. And then I can really scrape the bowl down as well. I think I've mentioned before in other videos, I think most of my time in the kitchen is scraping containers and bowls and all of that. It's got to be done. Now that I've got my bowl scraped, add in the rest of my dry ingredients. And then just get in here with your muscle and mix it together. So keep in mind, this is a double batch. So there's a lot more to work with here than if you were making a single batch. Always scrape the, the sides and the bottom of the bowl. Now you can see this is a fairly stiff dough, but it's still really soft at the same time. I shouldn't say a stiff dough, it's a really thick dough, but it's still really soft. Once your cookie dough looks like this, we are ready to put it on our cookie sheets. Get everything out of the way here. Give myself some room. So I've got parchment lined cookie sheets. I don't ever bake these two trays in the oven at a time. I find that with this particular oven, I don't always get even baking. And because these cookies go kind of low and slow, I don't like to open the oven and switch them around. So I've got a cookie scoop here. You don't have to use a cookie scoop. You could actually put this into a piping bag. It is kind of thick, but it does work in a piping bag and then you just pipe out little circles. This cookie scoop holds about one teaspoon. And I find that it's the perfect size if you just level it off. And we don't want these too terribly close together because they do spread a little bit. And I find that this size of a cookie scoop is just about as close as you can get to the size of a store-bought vanilla wafer cookie. But they're your cookies. Make them as big or as little as you like. Now this recipe is really super fast and easy to make, minimal ingredients, but it is a little time consuming just because they go longer in the oven per tray of cookies. And don't worry if they look a little kind of mounded, they do flatten out in the oven as well. And I should show you, I'm going just a pretty level scoop here. And I will say too, 
This cookie dough I've not ever frozen before. I have a lot of cookie recipes where you can freeze the dough exactly like this and then when they're frozen, take them off the parchment and put them in a Ziploc bag or some kind of plastic container and store them in the freezer. This particular cookie dough I haven't done that with yet. So if you want to try it, let me know how it goes. Okay, in the oven for about 20 minutes. And then I'll just keep going with my cookies. You've got time, you could wash up, do the dishes, whatever you like to do while you're waiting for your cookies in the oven. This is my last tray of cookies to come out of the oven. And this is what you're looking for. You want them to be golden brown around the edges and then the bottom to be golden brown. And you can see they do spread out just a little bit, but you can still place them fairly close together on the cookie sheet. Make room here. Last one. So they don't look exactly like a vanilla wafer or nilla wafer as they were called. Or I guess as the name brand were called. Any kind of generic brand were called vanilla wafers. So I can try one of these cooled off cookies. Are they exactly like the store bought version? No, but they are a really good gluten free version golden brown on the bottom, and you want them to be definitely a golden brown color around the edges and golden on the top. You can bake these longer and they do get darker in color, but then they, they don't taste as good. They get a little bit crispier, but then they dry out more, which these are supposed to be a crunchy cookie anyways. So they're a little bit thicker of a cookie than a traditional store-bought one. So when I was experimenting with these cookies and I was trying to find one that was close enough to the original, going off of memory, because it's been years and years and years since I'd eaten one, but also one that, that I enjoy. And this recipe I'm very happy with. And if you remember, like I remember those cookies tasting, is they were crunchy, but not super duper crunchy. And they were a really dry cookie, which I think is why they work so well for things like a pie crust or in pudding desserts, things like that. Or for that matter, when I was a teenager, I worked at a fast food restaurant called Arctic Circle, and they were known for all of their shakes. And we would always stick a Nilla wafer cookie in the shakes and they would hold up really well in the ice cream. So again, is it exactly like the vanilla wafer cookies? No, but it's a really good gluten-free version. It has really good vanilla flavor. They're really crispy on the outside and a little bit softer on the inside. If you know how gluten-free baked goods are after a couple of days, they have a tendency of drying out, these will do the same thing, which is not a problem at all. It's kind of what they're supposed to be. Now, in my experimenting, when I was trying out different recipes for this cookie, some of those recipes I baked for 15 minutes at 350. They turned out okay. They got darker golden around the edges, but they were a lot softer in the middle. And they actually looked better than what these ones look like. But I wanted them to be mostly crispy throughout. And so a lower baking temperature and a little bit longer in the oven got me what I was looking for. So I encourage you to experiment. I encourage you to experiment with different sugars. You could do the honey version like I do. You could try white sugar, powdered sugar, I don't know that brown sugar would give it the exact flavor that, that this cookie is supposed to be, but why not? Try it out. And again, use a good quality vanilla because that is what you're going to be tasting the most. Really good. I did not try these with coconut oil. I really thought about it. And I also thought about, oh, maybe half coconut oil, half butter. 
but I didn't try it out. So if you try it with coconut oil, let me know how it goes. And the cookie scoop that I used, I think gave me the perfect size cookie that I was looking for. Anything bigger than this, I think it would be the same issue as cooking at a higher temperature. I think it would get too golden brown around the edges before the middle was done to be kind of a crispier cookie. But try it out. Let me know what you think if you make this recipe. Let me know if you make this recipe and then you put it in some kind of banana pudding dessert. I might even try it myself. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see you on the next one.